This is Geometry, Chapter 9, Section 4, in which we will study compositions of transformations. When we talk about a composition of these things, these transformations, what we're talking about is doing more than one thing to a picture. You can think of it as doing a sequence of steps to something. We have a pre-image, some image, some figure, some you know, shape of some kind. We do one transformation on that, then we take the image we got and do another transformation, and we can keep doing transformations as long as they keep giving them to us. Okay. Now, there are a few uh, common compositions. The first one that we're going to look at is called a glide reflection. And it, all that is is a translation followed by a reflection. And that's the order you do it in. Make sure you're careful about that. Do it in the right order. Translation first, then reflection. In some cases, it won't make a difference which order you do, but better safe than sorry. So we have a triangle, PQR, that has certain vertices, and we know how to plot those. 1, 1, 2, 5, and 4, 2. So we have our original triangle. Connect, connect, connect. Now, our job is to do a glide reflection with a translation vector of 0, 3, and then a reflection in the x-axis. Well, first we do the glide. So we're going to take each point and glide up 3, because that's what the vector says. Move it up 3, so add 3 to the y's and then reflect those points in the x-axis. Well, if we reflect in the x-axis, that means the y changes sign. We're four away from the x-axis, so we need to go four away. We're eight away, so we need to go eight away. And then five away, so five away. Notice here we have two primes because it's the second image. They call that double prime, just so you're aware of the notation. If we did a third figure or third uh, composition, it would be triple prime, a fourth one, you'd have four primes. Now we need to plot our final shape. So it says go to 1, negative 4, go to 2, negative 8, and go to 4, negative 5. This is all we have to do with this, is plot the original and plot the final. If it helps you to plot this step in the middle so that you can see the reflection better, that's fine with me. If it helps you do it, by all means, draw in the middle step. If you don't need to draw the middle step, don't draw the middle step. Okay, strictly left up to you. As long as you get to the right place at the end, I'm all good. <clears throat> now we have a few theorems to look at here. Relax, don't panic. You're not going to have to prove them. All right, the first one, theorem 9-1, says that if, if we have a composition of isometries, we have an, still have an isometry. All right. Remember back in chapter 4 we talked about isometries are things that keep the size the same. Things like reflections, translations, and rotations maintain the size of whatever shape it is. It just moves it around. Well, if you have two things back to back that keep the same size, you still have the same size thing. Imagine me taking a chair in the room 
moving it across the room and then turning it on its side. Okay, the chair is still the same size. Doesn't matter what else I've done to it. I haven't stretched it. I haven't shrunk it. I haven't wadded it up and thrown it out the window. <coughs> so that's what we're talking about here with isometries. They keep the same size. Our second theorem deals with having multiple reflections and we have two options. We have parallel lines, which we're going to look at on this page, and then we have intersecting lines that we're going to look at on the next page. Okay. And what we have here with these two parallel lines, I have some shape out here that I'm going to reflect across the first line and then take that image and reflect it across the second line. And what I will end up with is it'll be turned back this way again, shifted over twice the distance between the two lines. Now I've got this set up in pictures for you so that you can understand this. I've got my original shape. I'm going to reflect it across this first line. Okay, So it's approximately, it should be exactly, but I probably didn't get it exact the same distance across here and each point is the same distance away from that center line, that first line. Now I'm going to take this image and reflect it again across the second line. What this theorem tells me is this has now just been shifted over and how far has it been shifted? Twice the distance that we started with. So if I told you this, these two lines were five feet apart, then these two points that match up are double that. They're ten feet apart. Okay. Now by the same token, if we reflect in intersecting lines, then we don't get a translation what we get is a rotation. The center of the rotation is the point where the two lines meet, and the angle of the rotation is twice as big as this angle between the two lines. Okay, let's try to reflect that. We have our original pre-image and I'm going to reflect it across this first line. So this point should move to about here. This one moves to here, and so forth. Now I'm going to take the image there and use it to reflect across this. So this point should end up about here. I was off a little bit. This one would end up here, and so forth. Now this is not just translated, because it's not facing the same direction. If it was translated, it would be shaped, or facing, turned this way. What's happened is it's been rotated. And it's been rotated twice as much as this angle. So if this angle were 30 degrees, then this rotation from here to here would be 60. If I told you this was 80 degrees, then this rotation would be 160 degrees. It would be double whatever this angle was. Okay. You're going to be drawing things like this. It will help you to draw in the middleman so that you can end up getting to the right final place. But otherwise, it's not really that tough. Um, you, like I said before, I'm not going to use protractors and rulers and make sure you measured it out exact. You know, as long as you're in the right neighborhood, you've got the right basic idea, you're going to be fine. If you had questions along the way, hopefully you wrote those down, and we will see you in class.